Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through varicose veins. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash varicose veins or in the vascular surgery section of the ZeroDefinals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Varicose veins are distended, superficial veins measuring more than 3 mm in diameter, usually affecting the legs. Reticular veins are dilated blood vessels in the skin, measuring 1 to 3 mm in diameter. Telangiectasia refer to dilated blood vessels in the skin, measuring less than 1 mm in diameter. They're also known as spider veins or thread veins. Let's talk about the development of varicose veins. Veins contain valves that only allow blood to flow in one direction, towards the heart. In the legs, as the muscles contract, they squeeze blood upwards against gravity. The valves prevent gravity from pulling the blood back down into the feet. When the valves become incompetent, the blood is drawn downwards by gravity and pulls in the veins and the feet. The deep and superficial veins are connected by vessels called perforating veins or perforators and these allow blood to flow from the superficial veins to the deep veins but not the other way around. When the valves are incompetent in these perforators, blood flows from the deep veins back into the superficial veins and overloads them. This leads to dilatation and engorgement of the superficial veins, forming varicose veins. So varicose veins are caused by incompetent valves in the perforating veins. Let's talk about chronic venous insufficiency briefly. When blood pools in the distal veins, the pressure causes the veins to leak small amounts of blood into the nearby tissues. The haemoglobin in this leaked blood breaks down into haemosiderin, which is deposited around the shins in the legs. This gives a brown discoloration to the lower legs, and this is known as haemosiderin staining. Pooling of blood in the distal tissues results in inflammation. The skin becomes dry and inflamed, and this is referred to as venous eczema. The skin and soft tissues become fibrotic and tight causing the lower legs to become hard and narrow. This is referred to as lipodermatosclerosis. Next let's talk about the risk factors for varicose veins, and these are increasing age, family history, being female, pregnancy, obesity, prolonged standing, for example occupations that involve standing for long periods, and deep vein thrombosis, which can cause damage to the valves in the veins. Next, let's talk about the presentation. Varicose veins present with engorged and dilated superficial leg veins. They may be asymptomatic or have symptoms of a heavy or dragging sensation in the legs, aching in the legs, itching, burning, edema or fluid swelling in the legs, muscle cramps, and restless legs. Patients may also have signs and symptoms of chronic insufficiency, such as skin changes and ulcers. Let's just talk about the special tests for varicose veins. Firstly, the TAP test. The TAP test involves applying pressure to the saphenofemoral junction, or SFJ, and tapping the distal varicose vein, feeling for a thrill at the SFJ. A thrill suggests incompetent valves between the varicose vein and the saphenofemoral junction. Next, the cough test. The cough test involves applying pressure to the saphenofemoral junction and asking the patient to cough, feeling for thrills at the saphenofemoral junction. A thrill suggests a dilated vein at the saphenofemoral junction, called a saphenous varix. Next, the Trendelenburg test. The Trendelenburg test starts with the patient lying down and lifting the affected leg to drain the vein completely. 
Then apply a tourniquet to the thigh and stand the patient up. The tourniquet should prevent the varicose veins from reappearing if it's placed distally to the incompetent valve. If the varicose vein appears, the incompetent valve is below the level of the tourniquet. You can repeat the test with the tourniquet at different levels to assess the location of the incompetent valve. Next, the Perthes test. The Perthes test involves applying a tourniquet to the thigh and asking the patient to pump their calf muscle by performing heel raises while standing. If the superficial veins disappear while the patient is pumping their calf muscles, this means the deep veins are functioning normally. If there's increased dilation of the superficial veins, this indicates a problem in the deep veins, such as a deep vein thrombosis. And finally, a duplex ultrasound scan can be used to assess the extent of the varicose veins. This is an ultrasound scan that shows the speed and the volume of blood flow. Next, let's talk about management. Varicose veins in pregnancy often improve after delivery, so they're often managed conservatively with watchful waiting. Simple treatment options for varicose veins include weight loss, if this is appropriate, staying physically active, keeping the legs elevated when possible to help drainage, and the use of compression stockings. However, arterial disease needs to be excluded before the use of compression stockings using a ankle brachial pressure index. The surgical options for treating varicose veins are endothermal ablation, which involves inserting a catheter into the vein to apply radiofrequency ablation and destroy the vein, Sclerotherapy, which involves injecting the vein with an irritant foam that causes closure of the vein. And stripping of the veins, which is where the veins are ligated and pulled out of the leg. Finally, let's talk about the complications of varicose veins. And these include prolonged and heavy bleeding after trauma. Superficial thrombophlebitis which is thrombosis or blood clots and inflammation in the superficial veins, deep vein thrombosis, and all the issues associated with chronic venous insufficiency, such as skin changes and ulcers. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.